Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to fuel up and use this brand new Zippo insert. For the purposes of this video, we are going to insert it or install it into the JDH, I believe it's a 1995 Zippo that Gavin Lannon gave me. This is a lighter that has my initials on it. Now, I don't want to change anything substantially about this insert, so I'm not going to bloom out the wick on this one like I normally do. And I'll tell you, loosening this one, here I've got a really short screwdriver. It's got a good blade on it, and those things are really tight. Maybe my hands are just weak, which I know that's the case, but man, those things are, are tight. You can mar one up very easily. So we're going to disassemble this and try to take a look and just see whether we can see wick down in the bottom, get our flint spring and screw and the flint out. Now we'll pull our felt pad off the bottom and we will pull out a couple of the rayon pellets or balls and we won't see any wick there so then I will end up pulling out a couple more and we still won't we're going to get down to well over half of the lighter exposed or half of the insert exposed without being able to see any wick by the time I pull all this out so the purpose here, I don't expect it to make a big difference when we are lighting it the first time. I usually overfill them to some point, uh, to some level anyway. You can see we're going to pull out a couple more of these pellets and then still not be able to see the wick. And I'm going to decide that that is good enough because that was all I wanted to know is was this one packed any better than the other one, which it was not. When I found the other one not packed well, I went ahead and corrected it and have been using it. That lighter I fueled up, I believe, on Friday. Could have been Thursday. I'd have to go back and look to make sure. And it's still lighting today. I'm going to light it toward the end of this video, and you'll see it's still on that same fueling and still working just fine. So we got the wadding replaced back down in the same order that it was in there. And our felt pad back. And then grab our flint. And even though I try always to I put it back in in the right direction and then kind of shake it hoping it'll fall back into that same oval or same grooves. But you're going to see when I go to strike this lighter here in a bit that it does give my thumb some problems and there are some hitches but it doesn't cause any problem I should have struck it a few more times rather than just the once before I tighten it on down but live and learn stuff happens man I'm gonna squirt a little bit off in here and I didn't really overfill it like I tend to do so terribly Seems like a reasonable enough amount of fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up. At this point, it was not dripping down out of the wick like it will do a lot of times if you overfill it. Let the weight of that fuel get so heavy that it has nowhere to go but let gravity take it downward. I am going to move the wick right into the center of the chimney which is where I like to have it positioned we'll keep it locked up here for a minute and then give it a go I was watching the J. Rowe Lights video earlier today where he was interviewing Bill Calkins and he was talking about the bill lighters that he has this would be one of the lighters 
which was a gift to me from Gavin Lannon that would fit into that sort of a niche for me. Give us a go here and light you right up. Like I said, though, that's really what we expect. I would expect the negative aspect of this to come when the fuel starts to get low or has evaporated, when it really needs to reach down into the bottom of that tank, if that's what occurs. And can it pull that fuel up? So we'll see. Without it having a wick reaching all the way down, I doubt that it will. Getting back to the JDH on the lighter, though, I do have one lighter that is actually engraved Joe. Other than that, so I guess I have two that would be in my name category, and they're both Zippos. The other one, I think, is a 1980s or 1990s model, Slim. But the other one, which is not my name, but it was a name that my dad might have called me a time or two when he was getting ready to kick my ass. <laughs> the Jack Lighter is one that is very dear to me. Every bit as much so. Uh, really, though, because I'm trying to figure out somebody that I can give it to. Somebody close to me who would appreciate it. But I do have it in my mind to collect jack lighters anyway, simply because of my old man. I said earlier, I think this is a 1995. And the weld marks where Zippo had repaired it were not quite as clean as the ones that I showed off in the lighter last week, the 1965 lighter. You can also see when I strike this right now that it is reaching that flame up into the lid. So the lighter is a little bit overfueled, regardless of whether or not it leaked. It really should not do that. And I didn't spill it in there. It was all in the insert. So... I would say the lighter is a little bit overfilled with petrol fuel. Everything looks really good right now, but the key is going to be, that's really hot for me lighting it so much, the key is going to be, is it still lighting on the fifth day, like the other one was that we repositioned the wick in. So I've still been carrying and using the 1965. Still lighting up just fine, but I wanted to give it a fair treatment because we straightened up the wick on that one before we actually fueled it up and went to use it. So that's the purpose of this video, and I will continue to use it. So far, so good, though. Doesn't really look like it makes any difference. We'll see how it goes as the fuel is used and evaporates. Until next time.